satisfaction by building a custom feeding plan fitted to their needs and carrying it out with the highest quality, degree of quality possible. Our ownership structure and advantages. Clinko's going to be an LLC. The advantages is that LLCs are taxed as a pass-through entity. What that means is that it's taxed as if you were a sole proprietor, but it still gives you the benefit of a corporation. So what those benefits are that your personal property is that your personal property is protected. Um, so basically, in case of litigation or a lawsuit, they can't come after you know my personal stuff. They can only uh, go after the stuff that I've invest invested in the business. Some of our goals are to increase our customer base. We want to acquire six customers by the end of six months, so you know a customer per month. We also want to increase our search engine optimization. Um, what that means is that whenever someone Google's or you know does a search for Topeka janitorial Topeka cleaning. We want to be the first one that pops up. We believe that's really going to give us a kind of a head start um, and an advantage in order to reach customers. We also, in the future, want to provide window cleaning, carpet cleaning, floor stripping, and waxing. And uh, we want to get into government contracts. And we want to start doing this about a year after being in business. Um, our target market are male and female business owners or facility managers in the Topeka, Kansas area. They're 35 years and older, with a household size of about three to six people, with some sort of post high school education. You know, that can be a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, anything like that. Um, they also have an annual income of about sixty thousand to one hundred twenty thousand dollars. To reach that market, we're going to advertise in TK Business, uh, which is a business magazine here in Topeka. We also are going to do some cold calling, and we're going to implement a customer referral program. Um, in the janitorial business. That's you know the best marketing you can have uh, when people you know they like your services so they tell their friends about it. So we want to kind of encourage that. We're also going to have to do a lot of networking through events uh, at the Topeka Chamber of Commerce and through the Topeka Facility Managers Association and the Sales and Marketing Centers of Topeka. That's where a lot of our, our uh, target market uh, where they kind of get together and uh, you know participate in different things. So we also want to be there. All right, so we're going to move on to our finances. Our startup costs are two thousand two hundred four dollars and thirty cents. That includes, you know, equipment, a cash reserve for six months, our insurance premium, marketing, home occupation permit, and the LLC articles of organization. Our monthly costs are one hundred eighteen dollars and ten cents. That includes fixed costs for brochure advertising, depreciation, and unforeseen costs, which are something like you know vacuum repairs, things like that. Um, we also have an eight dollar vacuum filters uh, for variable costs each month. Our economics of one unit. One unit is one month of janitorial or cleaning. Um, you know, it really varies on the building, how much you're going to charge the customer and how much you're going to have to spend. But for demonstration purposes, I decided that uh, our unit was going to be four hundred dollars, and you know, the time to clean that was going to be sixteen hours per month. So in chemicals, on a building approximately that size, I was going to have to spend about $50 in chemicals. Um, and really what's expensive in the, in the janitorial business is the, the labor. But, you know, starting out, I'm not going to hire any people. I'm going to run the business and do the work myself. So that's why we get a, a gross profit of $350 per unit. The financial feasibility. Um, we're going to receive a payback on whatever we invested in 0.39 years. That's a little under five months. Um, we have a return on um, sales on of 58.19%, uh, return on investment of 253.42%. And our break even units are 0.34%. That's you know, less than one unit, just in order to stay afloat. Our competitors, some of our competitors are Bob's Janitorial. That's one of our bigger competitors. The, their advantages is that we're, they're well known. They've been around for about 30 years. You know, everyone here knows Bob's. Um, and they can offer, also offer you a wider range of services. Basically, what we want to do in the future, they can already do that right now. Um, so how we're going to go about that is whenever our customer comes up to us and says, hey, you know, I need some carpet cleaning or some window cleaning, um, we're going to hire subcontractors to do the work for us. Their disadvantage is, as, is that they have an extremely large office staff. I mean, they have a ton of secretaries, mechanics, stuff like that, which you know, make uh, what that means is they have to charge you a lot more in order to be able to you know maintain those people's salaries. They also do a lot of retail cleaning. That would be things like restaurants, stores, uh, you know, businesses like that. And 
that's a hard market to, to kind of make profit on, to get into, because it's really, you know, it's really unreliable. Um, let's say there's a restaurant, and I say, you know, on, on a day like this, when it's nice outside, it'll take me about an hour to clean it. Now, what about if tomorrow it's snowy, it's rainy, you know, there's a lot of mud. The same restaurant, it might take two or three hours, and you never know when it's going to be that bad, right? What if there's a month where it's all, it's horrible? So it's kind of really hard to bid on and uh, make accurate estimates. Service Master is a lot, another of our competitors. Their advantages is their, their uh, well-known franchise thing, their national um, franchise, and they also offer disaster restoration services. So basically, if there's a fire or you know uh, there's a flood, anything like that, they you can call them 24/7 and uh, they'll be there. And they uh, their disadvantages is that they can't build relationships with their customers as well because they're a, a franchise. So um, they also depend too much on their disaster restoration. That makes about 85% of their business. So they're not really too focused, or they really don't care too much about the janitorial. Um, but they still are, are competitors because they offer those services. So, um, all right, let's see. Now ISS Facility Services is another of our competitors. They're also a franchise, but they're a known uh, global franchise. They're based out of Denmark. Um, their advantage is also that they've acquired a customer base and employees They've established themselves in Topeka by buying out other smaller janitorial companies. So their disadvantages are that they're newer in Topeka, not a lot of people are familiar with them, and they're more interested in company stocks and uh, company value than actual customer service. So where Clinco comes in is we're going to be a local presence in Topeka. So you know you can drive up around the corner and you know you can, you can find us there, or we're going to be here. We're going to be local, so we're going to be able to be more personal one-on-one -on -one with our customers. We're also going to run criminal background checks and uh, drug testing on all our staff and do a continuous retesting to make sure uh, you know, we're hiring the best people we can. We're also going to limit our, our office staff to the essentials to what we really need so we can watch our overhead and you know, pass on those savings to you. So I would like to give thank you to my business mentors which would be Arnold Gordon from Cardinal Finney, Rex Schwartz from Short Design Group, Patty Bosser from Key Staffing, and Les Wright from the Small Business Development Center. Right, now I will open up for any questions you might have. Okay, and, um, this is when I, you know, I have business cards, so the judges were sitting around the table. This is when I, I went around and gave everyone a business card, a notepad, I can't really remember what, what I had. But uh, that's what I did, and I was answering their questions as, as I was going around. So that kind of felt more personal, right? So I was right next to them. So does anyone have any questions, any stuff they want to point out? Anything that could work? All right, you said you have your your company only works uh, one month or months. What yeah. If a business just wants to do like a sample and just do it once a week or maybe even just once? Well, the thing is, um, in, in the janitorial business, most contracts are six months. You have to sign a contract for six months. After six months, you go on a month to month uh, basis. Really, no one's gonna say, I just want you to clean once for me. That's more residential. Um, we only do offices. I mean, and that's the reason why, because in residential, you know, you'll clean someone's house uh, one time and they won't call you again until like six months later. So it really kind of doesn't work that way. And, you know, fortunately, kind of everyone understands that. So they'll just pay you for a month. I mean, they might just have you come clean a month, one month, but that's, we, you know, one time a month, but that's considered a month worth of, worth of cleaning. So, you know, the clients I have right now, they, they just have me do a, you know, deep cleaning once a month, uh, which would be like the first Friday of each month. But we still consider that uh, one month worth of janitorial. So, good question. Go so, like, the works that you have, what is your, like, staff work? Yourself, right now, yeah, it's, it's just me. Okay. Um, basically, just because uh, I'm not busy enough to where I just have to do you know, office work, okay. I can do the clean myself. So like um, in your business plan, did you say that? Like you'd be yeah. by yourself, and that, that kind of helped you not have to worry about so many salaries and things exactly. like that? Exactly, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's good that you asked that because of this, the, the judges they asked me the same thing. Um, I had to clarify on that point. And then so I went, I, you know, I clarified that I was the one that was going to run the business, I was going to do the cleaning, I was, I was going to pretty much 
do everything uh, at once starting out. Once I got busy enough to where you know I was having trouble keeping up, I was gonna hire people to do clean. I was just gonna manage the business. And then they asked me stuff about you know who who I was gonna hire um, once I needed to hire people, and then I told my family members. And they asked me about the challenges I would face having to uh, boss family members around. So I told them you know it's it's a little harder having to tell your family members uh, you know your elders what to do uh, because you know they can very easily you know. So you shut up, or you know, you stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's I had to go into that point. The question. Uh, so do you operate this business now? I am. Um, right now, I'm kind of trying to juggle school and, and work, so it's not uh, it's not as big. Um, but I guess yeah, I you know, I just have a client right now. But um, you know, hopefully this summer I can focus more on it. Like I, I wish I could. So would you put, like present yourself to the judges? Did you have your logo and things like the way you dress? Yeah, you this is basically how I dressed. It was a different color. It was uh, the company color. It was a blue shirt with the you know the actual uh, colors of the logo on it and the gray pants. So would you suggest like somewhat having a way to present your business in your attire and your business cards? Yes. Um, business cards will help out a lot. I mean, I, I walked around and gave judges their biz, uh, my business card, and then they would ask me questions, and you know, I was walking around answering them. But um, kind of present your business and your attire. You know, try to look professional within the ranges of your business. So yeah, you don't necessarily have to have a logo. In my case, I, I decided you know I was going to take a risk and go for it, and uh, it kind of made me stand out. Um, it was. I got it across the street, they charged me $40 to set up the logo. And then it's $8 after that for each shirt you get or each stuff. So I paid $40 for the setup. So the, on the first shirt, I paid $48 to have it made. And on this shirt, I just bought the shirt and it was $8 to put the logo on. So yeah, that's something to consider if you want to go go for it. If not, you know, you can, you can uh, just try to dress up nice or, you know, try to be professional about it. Um, try to take it serious and really uh, show your professionalism for your business and your enthusiasm for it. So, like, another question I had was, when you came up to the assumption of how much money you were losing, mm -hmm. how did you fix that? Like, when you do your business plan, sometimes you lose money. So mm -hmm. how did you make it to where you didn't lose as much or didn't lose anything? Well, um, in janitorial, it's really hard to lose money. Because, uh, like I said, your labor is, is the biggest cost. Right. So that was in my case. But although this, this was like my third or fourth business plan. Um, so, you know, for the people that are still are kind of worried about that. Um, yeah, this, this wasn't my first business plan. On my other business plans, I was losing money. So what I did was I tried to see why I was losing money. Was I not charging enough? How much were my competitors charging? Maybe I was spending on stuff that wasn't needed, you know. And I was trying to buy out new equipment when I could save money buying used equipment. So I look at all that stuff for for my business. Um, my starting cost were like twenty two hundred. And That actually wasn't how much I spent because I uh, I looked up janitorial auctions and I found one like two or three hours from here and I bought all I needed for like four hundred dollars, three hundred, four hundred. Using your YE points too. Yeah, using my my YE points. So it worked out for me. I saved a lot of money. So you know, keep that in mind. Try to find new stuff. Uh, try to cut back on, on expenses as much as you can. So for those like, if you give us a general idea, not even just like for the exact three competitors you mentioned, but just in general, um, how much other companies would charge for essentially the same product? What do you mean, how much other companies? Yeah, like if we went to Bob's Janitorial and we wanted would you say like one one mm -hmm. for the same thing? Yeah, it's uh, it, it'd be around around the same price. I based my my price from uh, one of my business mentors, um, Addie Bossert. She gave me uh, she actually let me take a look at her contracts that she had had with uh, other other janitorial companies, and you know looking at her at the size of her um, of her building, her office. I kind of base, they're, they're around the same price, like, you know, probably a $20, $30 D-Way. But, um, 
the janitorial people focus more on quality. When they're shopping out, when they're shopping for janitorial services, they want to focus on quality and honesty, reliability, which I mean, I know sounds really, you know, every company says they're going to be honest, reliable, but in janitorial, that really has to be the case. Um, because, you know, if some stuff goes missing, the first thing people say, it was a janitor. And a lot of times that's not the case, right? But you you got to be able to have a good reputation to back that up. So that's what she was telling me. You know, a lot of the people that she had to, to stop hiring um, janitorial wise, it wasn't because they were charging her too much. It was more of she didn't like the services they were giving her. Um, they were really inconsistent. They missed trash here and there. Um, so for the janitorial industry, it's more about quality. So when you bake, how did you get the idea of um, you know, out of all those little components you have, what made you get into this one other than the buddy? <laughs> um, that's an interesting story. Um, that was basically what, when I went to New York, that's most of the stuff I had to, to talk about. That's what everyone wanted to know. Um, when my family, we used to live in Florida. When we moved to Kansas, which was in 2007, when the economy started to go really bad, uh, we decided to move to Kansas. There was uh, my dad got a job up here. But you know, when you move, you have to start making house payments, start buying different things. So you struggle financially. Um, my parents, they knew some people that would do office cleaning, and they started doing office cleaning after their their full time jobs. And then, so you know, when I wanted to go to like a school dance or you know some school activities, um, they would pick me up, and they'd already be you know around the neighborhood. So then they would take me, and I'd help them clean. So it kind of became a routine, you know, on the weekends I would go and help them and it would uh, help everything kind of go faster. We'd all get done faster. And it just, it just kind of became a routine for me. I really didn't think about it. And uh, when I started building the business plan, first I made a, a music store that targeted DJs. I made a restaurant, uh, a lot of different businesses. But I always get kind of to the end and my financials wouldn't be as good. Um, and I didn't feel like I could really you know, sell this. I didn't really know what I was talking about. So I kind of got to the end of class and I really needed to do something. So I decided, you know, I'm, I know about cleaning. Uh, I looked into the startup costs and they were really low. So I decided to go for it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew enough about it to where I could, I could make a knowledgeable business plan about it. So that's kind of how I got into, into the cleaning business. And then I mean, through my YE points and stuff, I was able to actually buy the stuff I needed and get started, so yeah, it was kind of like a big accident. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of how it Well, how do you make yeah. your customers trust you? Like that's where, you know, the way you described it, it's kind of like it's hard to get a reputation. So. It is, um, especially when you're young. But uh, what I get from, from a lot of the people I've talked to, they don't believe me, I'm, they don't believe I'm 19. They think I'm like 20 something. Uh, the, what, this is what they've told me. They say that you know I, I'm very professional about uh, you know talking about my business or talking to people, and uh, you know I I try to dress up nice as not as not uh, as I can, um, so they kind of think I'm uh, for my age, I'm I'm more mature than I am, um, so a lot of times they just they you know they try to trust me, I guess out of curiosity I don't really know why. Um, and these are people, these aren't uh, necessarily customers, because like I said, I only have one customer right now. Um, I haven't had a chance to go out and hunt customers down. But the people that I've talked to, that's what they've told me. So I mean, for your age, try to be as professional as you can. Um, get in touch with people that can really plug you in <coughs> with uh, contacts. I mean, if you take a look at, at my mentors, only one of those guys actually knows about cleaning. But not, you know, you can get a lot of advice, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff from people that aren't even your business. Your mentors don't have to necessarily be people who are doing, you know, whatever you're doing. What's your business? Sorry. A boxing gym. Boxing gym. Okay. So they don't all have to be uh, into boxing. You know, people that that are just in, in business, they can give you a lot of advice or you know, hook you up with a lot of people that can help you out. For example, this this man right here, shirt designer, Greg Schwartz. He owns uh, an architecture firm. He does architecture in like, 49 states. Um, so he he you know he knows a lot of people. 
Um, so if, if I go up to him or call him and ask him, hey, you know, I'm having trouble with this, if he can't answer my question, he knows someone that can. So you know, that's kind of, uh, networking is a big deal. That's kind of how you're gonna get to know people who can help you, just through networking. I mean, most of these people I met through, through the business mentors, the business advisors that came into Hawaii. Um, that's great, I just walked to the, the, to the Small Business Development Center and said, hey, you know, I'm working on this, I need help. And uh, Patty Bossert, that's, I met her through the class. Um, then through the competition, I met Arnold Gordon, uh, someone that, that saw me present. They said, hey, you know, you, uh, I know someone that can really help you out with your business. So they gave me his number, told them, you know, told me, call Arnold. And so that's how I met all, uh, Arnold. So a lot of these people, um, it's just kind of the sort of referrals, I guess, in a way. It's, it's called networking. You know, just get to know people, and they'll help you over. So did you say so like the business cards that you presented? What was that? Like the business cards that you presented? Mm -hmm. Would they have to be like mobile business cards, or can you, you know, a way to just? My my business cards. Okay. Yeah. My business cards. I'll give you one so you can look If anyone else wants one. Okay. So mine has my name, has right. a phone number on there. Um, it has my email, which now which now has a, a website, but back then it was just it was just a Gmail I made for the company. So I mean, that phone number, it used to be my cell phone number. Now that's uh, it's a Google Talk number. So basically, you call that number and uh, you know it it gets forwarded to my cell phone number. Um, but that I made these honestly for the for when I was going to New York. I didn't want to give people my cell phone number. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just a way to contact you. Um, they don't have to 